As we mentioned, the governor is now about to hold a news conference. We go to Pinellas County to listen to the governor. Ashley Moody, uh, St. Pete Mayor Ken Welch, Pinellas County EM Director Kathy Perkins, Sheriff Bob Galtieri, Senator Nick DeSigley, Representatives Burfield, Anderson, and Jacques, and we also have uh, members of the Pinellas County Commission. Uh, we are here in Pinellas County, which is currently on the edge of the cone, according to the National Hurricane Center's latest forecast, but that cone is subject to change, uh, and this, this storm could shift further eastward. Also, there will be uh, significant impacts outside the cone, uh, particularly in low-lying areas like the Barrier Islands we see here in Pinellas County. Uh, I've been in contact with all the major utility companies today. Uh, we will have uh, tens of thousands of linemen positioned uh, prior to the storm hitting the state, and their job is going to be, as soon as that storm passes, uh, to work to supplement all the activity that is going to need to take place to get power restored. Uh, Floridians in the path of this storm, though, should be prepared to, to lose power, uh, particularly if it ends up in a big bend, major impact. There's a lot of trees, you're going to have a lot of power lines down, uh, but even here in the Tampa Bay area, there is going to be power outages, so just prepare for that. Uh, we've got a lot of people staged that are going to do something about it to try to restore, uh, but there's no way you're going to get through this storm without losing power, so, so just make those preparations. Uh, we want to make sure, and we've been stressing, that if you have municipal electrical outfits, co-ops, uh, make sure that they're willing to accept the mutual aid. Uh, you're going to have Florida Power and Light, some of the bigger companies are going to have linemen ready to go. Uh, they can be of assistance. And we really want to have a force multiplier here. The quicker we could get the power restored, the better off everyone's going to be. Uh, we had a lot of success after Hurricane Ian, but when there were outfits that didn't accept the aid right away, uh, it took longer to, to restore the power. We want to get that power back on as quickly as possible. If counties need additional resources, and we basically have all the Gulf Coast counties from Tampa Bay all the way up until Franklin County in Northwest Florida, I know are, have been actively involved in preparing. If you need something from the state, submit that request as soon as possible. Uh, we'll be able to deliver it uh, today throughout uh, most of the day tomorrow, but as we get into the late afternoon, early evening, it's gonna start to get really, really nasty. It's gonna be tough to, to be on the road and doing that. So, so see what you need. If you need anything, uh, contact the Florida Division of Emergency Management as soon as possible. We wanna be helpful and we wanna get you uh, what you need. Uh, I have spoken with the president. I've spoken with FEMA Director Criswell, and then I've spoken with a number of local officials uh, throughout Florida's Gulf Coast, and, and everyone understands the significance of this event, and everybody is willing to work together to uh, achieve the best possible outcome for the residents of Florida. Now, as of 10 a.m. this morning, uh, the storm is located south of Cuba with winds 65 miles per hour. Uh, it will become a hurricane later today without question. Uh, current forecast is to make landfall around Florida's Big Bend region. But I think as we know, there's going to be things that happen in terms of uh, interactions with jet stream and all this other stuff that could push the storm further eastward. So the further east it goes, uh, the more impacts it's going to have on the overall Florida peninsula. So I would say everybody from on the Florida Gulf Coast, just watch and be prepared and take the necessary action to protect you and your family, particularly as you get uh, directives coming down from your local emergency managers. Uh, there is a hurricane warning in place from Sarasota County all the way up through northwest Florida on Florida's Gulf Coast. You are going to see uh, more of those uh, warnings and, and watches come uh, in the next day or two. We have had our pre-landfall declaration that we requested from the federal government. That has been approved, and we appreciate the administration for doing that. Uh, I've added today an additional 13 counties to our state of emergency total 46 counties that are under the executive order now. Of course, the Gulf Coast counties, but this is likely going to cut across the interior of the state. It's going to impact a lot of counties in north central Florida and particularly and potentially northeast Florida as well. We are operating at the state as level one, 24-7, round the clock. We did have a call with all the local emergency managers uh, earlier this morning uh, to discuss preparation 
uh, efforts and needs. And again, just um, be ready to go, submit any requests that you have, and make sure you're communicating with your residents. We have had uh, evacuation orders that have been issued by some of these counties. I know Kathy's going to come and talk about uh, what they're doing here in Pinellas. And so our message from the state is, is to heed those warnings, particularly if you're in the zone, zone A, uh, barrier islands, very low-lying places, this is going to be something that, that you are going to face impacts of. Uh, even if the storm is, uh, is off the coast here in the Tampa Bay area, you're still going to see uh, significant impacts from the surge. So, so heed that warning. When you're told to evacuate, you do not need to get in your car and drive so you're outrunning the storm or going to a different state or driving hundreds and hundreds of miles. If you're in a vulnerable area, uh, you evacuate to higher ground in a safe structure. Uh, a lot of times you don't even need to leave your county. Uh, so you're talking about evacuating tens of miles uh, rather than hundreds of miles. That also is better. It's going to be less accidents on the road. You're not going to have to wait in traffic. If everyone jams the interstate, it can get very, very miserable. So Florida's got uh, most of these structures, homes, hotels, stuff that are on the higher ground um, are going to be able to withstand uh, a major hurricane. So just understand that and, and take that into account. We don't need people, uh, you certainly don't need to be going hundreds and hundreds of miles. And I know we've had instances in the past where people tried to outrun the storm. The storm would actually take a little bit change in direction. And it turned out that they actually evacuated into the storm. So don't worry about the, the, the track as much. Just worry about if you're in one of those areas, get to the higher ground, get to the place that's going to be safe. Most of the threats that we're going to face is going to be from the surge. And so you're basically going away from the water uh, as best you can. The structures uh, are going to be able to handle, by and large, the, the winds. Uh, we, are, uh, we do have a lot of fuel that is stationed. Uh, it's on the way. It's going to be pre-staged, 200,000 gallons of fuel. We had a, a, a good fuel response with, with Hurricane Ian. A lot of the gas stations got up pretty quickly. There may not end up being major interruptions in fuel supply, but there may be. And so we want to make sure that we have that available. So that will be available as needed once the storm passes. We have seven urban search and rescue teams ready to deploy to the impacted area. Uh, of course, things like water and MREs and all that, uh, tarps, all that stuff will be staged. Uh, we'll be ready to go. So just please remain vigilant and please follow orders from your local emergency management personnel. Uh, we'll have a total of 5,500 National Guard uh, by the end of today that, that will be mobilized. Uh, they've got a lot of assets at their disposal, and they stand by ready uh, to help with the post-storm mission. FDLE and Florida Highway Patrol are working 24-7 shifts, and that's hundreds of additional personnel that will be assisting in the storm aftermath. Uh, we do have the Starlink internet that we used a lot after Hurricane Ian, so we have 650 of those Starlinks that are ready to deploy in the impacted areas, and we want to get those to people as soon as we can once the storm passes, and we will do that. Uh, there's a lot of uh, announcements from the school districts about schools being closed. I would anticipate, I know a number of them have already issued uh, directives. Uh, just listen to your local school district, but I would anticipate uh, you're going to see a lot of school closures along Florida's Gulf Coast uh, over the next couple days. So parents, uh, please pay attention to that and please make the necessary arrangements. Uh, we are ready to surge uh, resources once the storm passes. It's uh, really important that uh, anybody who's in need of rescue, that, that we were going to have people there. Hopefully not a lot of people. Hopefully they, they heed the warnings and they don't end up in, in harm's way, but uh, we're going to have people ready to be able to, to effectuate rescues. Uh, we also, in terms of this gas, the, uh, uh, Wilton Simpson, our Ag Commissioner, was with us this morning. There was a cross-contamination of diesel fuel into regular fuel at the port of Tampa, and so that got distributed to some gas stations. So this was something that was identified over the weekend. We weren't sure, uh, the, the Department of, of Agriculture wasn't necessarily sure how many initially uh, 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 stations that this impacted. Turns out it's about 29 stations, and so those have been identified. They're taking remedial action. People who use gas on that, uh, just beware, you may have ended up having a cross-contamination 
maybe it's just a little diesel and it get diluted but if it was if it was all diesel that's going to cause a problem so so t check that out for those stations we don't think this is going to end up being a major impact on the fuel supply though there's already been some some of the stations have already had remediation others are going to be remediated today and through tomorrow so so that likely isn't going to be uh, a reason if there somehow is a fuel interruption it'll likely be for for other reasons other than that Ro evacuation so rosen hotels has activated its florida resident distress rates uh, so that's going to be a reduced rate for families that, that do need to evacuate. So, so keep that in mind. And I know some of the other uh, companies and hotels will, will probably likely do the same thing in the ensuing days. And again, you know, you don't need to go, you don't need to go to Alabama or Georgia or Tennessee. You, know, you, can, you can go somewhere uh, within the state, even within your own county, and, and be, be all good. Generators, as you prepare for the storm and you prepare to lose power, Using a generator is a great way to be able to restore connectivity, uh, but you got to use it properly. You have to keep it outdoors. You can't run it in your garage. You can't run it inside your house. It needs to be at least 20 feet away from windows and doors, uh, and the exhaust has to be pointed away uh, from your home. We've had uh, in the past generator uh, misuse, and that, 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 that could be fatal when, when that happens, when that carbon monoxide starts circulating in your home and you breathe it in. Uh, so please use the generators appropriately, keep them out of your house, keep that exhaust pointed away from any doors and windows. I am going to be, after this briefing, heading to Levy County to meet with officials there and discuss their preparation efforts. Uh, we'd ask all Floridians to uh, monitor the weather, monitor the updates, uh, listen to your local officials. You can go to floridadisaster.org slash get a plan if you have any questions about what you need over these next few days. But now is the time to, to, to put your plan in place. You do have time today and, and throughout most of tomorrow uh, to, to make arrangements, uh, whether it's an evacuation or whether it's other things. As we start to get into to Tuesday evening, you are going to start to see the impacts of this, and we expect a landfall uh, sometime on Wednesday. Uh, with that, I'm going to invite up Kevin Guthrie. We'll also hear from uh, Kathy Perkins and our Attorney General, Ashley Moody. Kevin? All right. Thank you, Governor. Thank you for your leadership and your continued support for the division. Um, as the Governor has said, we have plenty of water MREs, specialized equipment, liaisons, water rescue teams, shelter nurses, and other resources, including the Florida National Guard. Uh, to help respond to this particular disaster. We need you to take time now ahead of landfall to evaluate your capabilities. When I say your capabilities, I'm talking about you, the homeowner, you, the business owner. What are your capabilities? And tell us, let us know at the emergency management agencies at the local level and at the state level if you need assistance. This morning, the State Emergency Operations Center obviously activated a, uh, level one, as the governor has mentioned. Um, we have uh, heard the update on the position. I think the very f the, the one thing that I would say and reiterate that the governor said is Wednesday morning at about 1 a.m., 2 a.m. in the morning, you're going to have a Cat 3 hurricane sitting about 70 miles off the coast of Pinellas County. That is going to cause storm surge. That is going to cause life-threatening storm surge into the Bay Area. So please heed the warnings and the evacuation orders that Kathy Perkins, the emergency management director here in Pinellas County, is going to issue. That will come from her. That will not come from the governor. That will not come from me. So please pay attention to what the local emergency managers in this media market are saying. And uh, if they ask you to evacuate, then please do so. To the governor's point, again, we are looking for you to evacuate tens of miles. Obviously, Rosen Hotels are over in Orlando. That's about 50, 60 miles across, uh, across I-4. Uh, that would be an excellent place if you ha could financially afford it. If you cannot, Kathy will talk about shelters, head to a shelter, head to a friend and family, uh, but we will lose power. People need to know that, and if you're a power dependent, you depend on the power, you must get to some location that can provide you power. Uh, special needs, if you are a special needs individual, you have not registered yet, you can always go to floridadisaster.org slash SNS, that's, uh, spe I'm sorry, SNR, Special Needs Registration, and you can sign up and we will forward that stuff, uh, that information to the county level. So please, the time is now, you heard the governor talk about acting, it is now time to put your plan into action.
please make sure you're doing that. Make sure you have enough food and water for the next seven days. We will work diligently with the county to get food, water, fuel, power restored. Uh, Melissa is obviously here with Duke Energy. She uh, told me that they have already 4,500 resources staged and ready to go. And again, those independent owned utilities will continue to raise their numbers over the next several days to where we get to tens of thousands. Um, if you are looking for resources uh, for this particular event, please make sure you go to floridadisaster.org slash updates so that you can get the updates on our resources and what's going on. Again, you can always follow us at, uh, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at F-L-S-E-R-T, at Florida CERT. Again, Governor, thank you for your leadership. I appreciate your help and everything that you've done for us. Okay. Kathy? Thank you so much. Thank you, Governor, for coming here and bringing a spotlight to us and, and our concerns. Thank you, Director Guthrie, for all of your leadership at the State Division of Emergency Management. Uh, we are very concerned here in Pinellas County because we do have life-threatening storm threat. Uh, we could see four to seven feet of storm surge. And for those of you that were here during Hurricane Ada, we had over a thousand homes that had at least a few inches of water in them, 20 homes that were destroyed, um, and hundreds more that had more water in them. So we need everybody to take this seriously. Our Board of County Commissioners met this morning at 10 a.m. and issued a local state of emergency. And following that and looking at the advisories that have come out, we are issuing a mandatory evacuation of Zone A all, including all mobile homes starting tonight at 7 p.m. If you live in those barrier islands and those low-lying areas, we want you to move out of harm's way. The concern being, and both the governor and Director Guthrie talked about this, this is going to be a Category 3, a major storm, right off the coast of Pinellas County. If we saw what happened last year, just takes a little shift in that trajectory of the storm and then it could be coming here. So we wanna make sure that everybody is prepared. We are also issuing evacuation orders for our residential healthcare facilities in zone A as of 1 p.m. today. These folks serve our most vulnerable residents and we wanna make sure that they are moving out of harm's way. We are encouraging our residential healthcare facilities and anyone evacuating to move beyond zone B. Out of an abundance of caution, if that storm continues to come towards us or we see increased levels of storm surge, we only want people to have to move once. Again, we have a lot of inland areas, a lot of hotels, friends and family that you can stay with here locally. We will open a special needs shelter as of 7 p.m. tonight at John Hopkins Middle School for anyone that can transport themselves on our special needs registry. As Director Guthrie mentioned, if you are not on the registry and you do need assistance, you can actually call our County Information Center line at 727-464-4333. We notified our special needs residents that are electric dependent in mobile homes, zones A and B, that we will be starting evacuation transportation for them tomorrow. We will take them to the special needs shelters that have the backup generators and staff to be able to assist them. Again, if you can stay with family or friends, please do so. Please check on your elderly neighbors or neighbors that might need assistance just to make sure that they are prepared as well. If you can, include them in your hurricane planning. The National Hurricane Center does expect this storm to continue to intensify. The latest advisory that we heard from the National Weather Service is that our barrier islands could experience gusts of up to 115 miles per hour. So we want everybody to take this seriously. Uh, we will be evacuating uh, about 338,000 people are currently under that evacuation order. We want you to stay informed. You can sign up for Alert Pinellas. You can download the Ready Pinellas app, and you can also go, also go to our website at disaster.pinellas.gov. You can check your zone and find out if you're in the zone and you may need to evacuate. Again, thank you, Governor. Thank you to Director Guthrie for all of your assistance. Hey, Ashley. Thank you, Governor. You know, Florida is an experiencing a net in migration boom. And when we gathered here less than a year ago, to warn Pinellas County and other surrounding counties about what was about to happen and how to prepare, there were thousands fewer residents. Many have moved here from out of state. And so listening to 
the advisories on how to prepare, when to evacuate is so very important. And I would ask our Floridians that have lived here and maybe lived through numerous storms, warn your neighbors, your friends that are new to our state about how important it is to evacuate and how dangerous it is not to heed the warnings or prepare. We are in a tax holiday right now so that everyone can be storm prepared. Go out, get the items that are on the list. If you need that list, you can go to myfloridalegal.com. The essential commodities that, that you will need from lumber to water to tarps, all of those supplies are protected under our price gouging statute. So as soon as the governor declared a state of emergency, that laid out and put into effect our price gouging laws. And so we immediately uh, activated our price gouging hotline. We want everybody to be able to afford these important supplies that they will need to weather the storm. And so if you see, whether it's gas or water or lumber, at an egregious price that, some, that, that you would not see on average, please let us know. There are three ways you can report. You can go to myfloridalegal.com. You can call our price gouging hotline at 1-866-9-NO-SCAM. We've even made it easy to download an app called No Scam on an Android or Apple device. And you can help us gather what we will need to make sure we can hold bad actors accountable. We do have folks that can go into the field immediately and make sure those prices get reduced, but we need your help to do that. So important to listen to those that are going to be advising us, our emergency, emergency management officials from the state to the county. We are grateful we have such great leadership like Governor DeSantis and Kevin Guthrie down to our county leadership, but we all need to pay attention, make sure we're prepared, and we will weather this storm successfully. Thank you so much, Governor. And so we will um, be obviously continuing to provide updates. There'll be a 5 p.m. advisory that the National Hurricane Center will put out. Uh, and we'll, we'll see you know, if there's any, any significant changes to this track. It's been pretty stable today. But uh, a little wobble one way or another could, could really make a difference in terms of the impacts that different parts of the state uh, we'll see. Uh, if it wobbles west, you're looking at Tallahassee is going to end up getting, getting impact. If it wobbles east, you're going to see more severe impacts here in the Tampa Bay area. So all this is in play right now. I think everybody should, whether you're inside that cone or outside that cone, it's, uh, if you're close to the cone, you should assume that there's going to be, there's going to be noticeable impacts. And, and some of these impacts could end up beco becoming catastrophic. This was a storm that most people at the end of last week were thinking would, would maybe end up a tropical storm or maybe a Category 1. Almost every time they've updated this over the last couple of days, they, they've said it's going to get stronger. So, so buckle up for this one. It's going to be a major hurricane. And uh, we want everybody to make the best decisions they can for themselves and their families. And we're going to be uh, here on the back end uh, to, do, to do what we do in terms of the power and, and the restoration and everything like that. So um, do what you got to do. You still have time. Uh, you still have time today. You have time for most of tomorrow. But as we get into tomorrow evening, you know, I think, I think this is uh, scheduled to be off the coast of Tampa Bay sometime in the wee hours of Wednesday. So that's going to be that's going to be felt. That's going to be some some hazardous conditions at that point. Okay. Do we have any questions? Yes. Governor, we're in the middle of a significant historic heat wave uh, this summer. It's been far hotter than average. Uh, how is the state planning to help people wherever folks may lose power, uh, not just in uh, you know residential care facilities, but in residential areas in general? What's the state doing to make sure that people stay safe and hydrated? Well, that's why we're going to have up to 40,000 linemen stationed, uh, probably going to be in, in the Marion Villages area, Sumter Marion area, and then Lake City area. And, and those, uh, those linemen are going to descend to, to restore power as quickly as possible. We understand it's important. We understand that, one, just for morale, it's important. It's also important for, for health and welfare. So there's been a lot of preparations on that. And I know Melissa from Duke, I spoke with earlier today, they have surged a lot of resources. Uh, this is an area of impact where there's a lot of Duke customers. I also spoke with Tampa Electric. Uh, they've got uh, more linemen that are ready to surge. Clearly they have. And then we've got a lot of municipal and electrical co-op outfits throughout the area that may be affected. 
And so they're taking their uh, necessary preparations, but they've also been very open to accepting the mutual aid that's going to come back. And that, that could be the difference between getting power back on in a matter of days versus something that could drag on longer than that. So, so the resources are there. There have been pre-planning for this. It is important to be able to do. And, you know, this is going to cause a lot of power disruptions particularly in some of the areas that are heavily wooded. It's going to knock down a lot of trees. You're going to see a lot of lines be knocked down. There's going to have to remove debris. So there's going to be a lot that's going to go into it, but there's a lot of manpower that's going to be there for it. Yes? Uh, you seem to talk with President Biden earlier. Can you tell me about that conversation and what's about what so he said that, that they were supporting our pre-landfall declaration and they stand by ready to, to assist uh, with, with anything that we need. And I think that by and large, we have most of the counties are clicking ahead. We have gotten some requests for, from the state. Uh, I think we're going to be able to fulfill uh, that. And so the question will be on the back end, are there things that, that we can do? Uh, we will obviously be, be seeking to activate whatever's available to help Floridians in terms of in terms of federal federal assistance, that's just the way we do things, and so you can count on us doing that. And uh, the president indicated he'd be receptive for that. I think he appreciated that this is uh, is going to be a major hurricane, and that's something that's significant. 